Hi guys! So in this video we're going to practice uh, part writing deceptive cadences. So before we do that, really quick review. What is a deceptive cadence? So deceptive cadences are cadences that go from five to six. It can be either in the major or in the minor mode. And it's a cadence where the six is substituting for the tonic. So it's really kind of like an authentic cadence that would go five to one, except the six is replacing. It's substituting for the one chord. Well, how does that work? Well, if you look at the six chord and the one chord, they actually, they're fairly similar to one another, right? They both have scale degree one in them, which is significant for the, for the cadence. They both have scale degree three in them. The only thing that's different between these two cadence, between these two chords is scale degree six, I'm sorry, scale degree five and six, which are only a step apart. So the six is actually a pretty easy chord to substitute for the one chord and even keep the same soprano line often um, between the two. Okay, so actually when you do your functional analysis, um, because the six really is a substitute for the tonic, you're gonna write this out as dominant to tonic substitute. We're going to think of that six chord as just a substitute for a placement for the tonic, which is what makes it kind of a deceptive cadence, right? We sort of expect the tonic. We even hear it maybe in the top voice. We hear it. We ends on scale degree one or it ends on three, but it's not actually a one chord. It's a six chord instead. Okay, so um, let's look at part writing it. So you might be able to already kind of anticipate some of the problems we're going to have. So when we looked at part writing four to five, we talked about how when chords, when the roots of chords are a step apart, like they are here, it's a little bit tricky to part write. We, it's really easy to end up with parallels, right? So when we went from the four chord to the five chord, one way to deal with that is we knew that we had to move contrary to whatever was happening in the bass. That was the trick for dealing with it. And that's going to be one trick for working with the deceptive cadence. It will be one, but we're actually going to need one more trick. It's a little bit tricky. Um, but once you memorize it, you're good. Okay, so um, five to six. So let's try it. Let's work this out first, just the way we might normally part write this. So the five chord, we've already got that there. The six chord in the key of C would be A. C, E, typically in root position chords, you double the root, right? So probably the A. Okay, now I know I'm resolving a dominant chord, so always, 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 right? When I resolve a dominant, in for any sort of dominant chord, I'm looking for those tendency tones, right? So where is the tendency tone here? The leading tone in C is B, right? It's in the inner voice, okay, so it doesn't need to resolve. Okay, so I move on. Okay, so let's write this out. So. Six chord, it's root position, so I need A in the bass. And then I'm gonna move on up, C. Smoothest place to put C would be, well, either here or here would both be a step apart, so skip C for the minute. How about E? Smoothest place to put E would be here, right? So if I do that, I got an E here, okay, which means that the C smoothest place then would be here. And if I double my A, there it is, end. You see the parallels. Can you find them? Can you find two sets of them? Yes, right? So right here, parallel octaves. I've got right here, I've got parallel fifths, right? Two beautiful sets of parallels, just like the same way when we went from four to five, we had the same kind of parallels, right? So again, as just to kind of reiterate this idea, if you if you part write this like this without being careful with the baseline, you're gonna end up with parallels. So one strategy then that we tried was to move everything contrary to the base, right? So if the baseline goes up, we're gonna move everything down, right? As smoothly as we can. Okay, so try again. A, C, E. We're gonna double the A. Okay, so I got the A in the base. Smoothest place to move one of these notes down into C would be where? Alto, right? So if I wanna move one of these down into C, B here. Okay, smoothest place to move one of these down into E. Well, down into E or down into E, soprano, right? And then I want to double my A, so there it is. All right, so now if you double check that again, it looks good. No issues with parallels, this is it. Okay, so here is one strategy in the major mode, is to be just to move everything contrary to what's going on in your bass line. However, in the minor mode, this trick is actually gonna get us in some trouble. And let me show you. So I'm just gonna recopy exactly, so the same part writing. So in the key of C major into the key of C minor, and I'm just gonna copy it out exactly as I've got it over here. 
and I want you to see if you can find the part writing issue. So I know I don't have parallels, right? Because nothing is, everything's moving in the same kind of motion here. But I do have kind of a strange interval that occurs in one of the voices. Can you find it? So you can pause the video if you need a couple extra seconds here to look for it. It is in the tenor. What is that interval? So from B natural to A flat is what? Augmented second, right? Now I don't have that issue in the major mode, right? Because in the major mode, it's an A natural. In the minor mode, it's an A flat. So that's why the issue happens. We've got flat six and seven. Okay, so this trick is really not so good on the minor. So what I'm gonna have to do in minor instead, and you can use the same trick in the major mode, um, a really common way of dealing with this is to is instead of doubling the root, you're gonna double the third of the sixth chord. Okay, so I've got A flat, C, E flat, and I'm gonna double the C. And if you wanna just always do this in your deceptive cadences, this is one easy way to solve the problem. And then you don't have to remember major, minor, whatever it is. Okay, so if I look at this chord, okay, so I'm gonna double the C and I'm just gonna delete these and just go ahead. Okay, so A flat, okay, so I need a C in here somewhere. So, C, C, A flat, C, I need an E flat, smoothest place to move everything downward, contrary motion, E flat. And then I'm gonna double my C, so like this. And there it is, and that fixes the problem now. So I've got the same voice leading as before, except now instead of going down to A flat from flat seven down to flat six, I've got this nice little half step motion up instead. Okay, so if you have you know difficulty remembering and you just wanna remember one rule, then one rule might be just to simply, when you go from five to six, double the third of the sixth chord, which is not what you're expecting. You're thinking to double the root, but double the third instead. Got it? All right. Good luck with your part rating.